Hi everybody, this is the Math 30-1 Trig 2 review. This is question 2B. Being asked to prove this identity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to model a procedure for you that I think will work better than, than what some of you do, which is just immediately jump to writing things in terms of sine and cosine. Okay? Uh, sometimes that's the long way around a problem here. Now, what we got to do with an identity is we need to prove that independent of each other, these two expressions are equivalent to the same thing. That's why they're equal to each other. So, and we're going to work on the more difficult side first, which in this case is obviously the left-hand side. Now, my recommendation to you right away when you see something like this as written as a, as a big fraction, um, because this is written as a vertical fraction here, I think most of you will find this that you'll be more successful is if you think about it in this term, in this sense right here, divided by, and you know what, I'm going to have to give myself a little bit more room here, okay? If you think about it as a horizontal division statement, so cosine, uh, cosecant of x plus the secant of x, okay? Now, normally what I would do at this point is I would start looking for Pythagorean identities, and I don't see any. So I start to look for obvious algebra, which would involve factoring, expanding, or adding fractions, and I, I don't see any of that either. So now I want to consider reciprocal functions here. Now, I don't have anything multiplied together, so what I'm going to do is, and I know people would say, ha ha, you're, you're going right to putting it in terms of sine and cosine, but yeah. Yeah, in this case here, what I'm going to have to do, and that's because these expressions are, are separated, uh, they're not multiplied together, so I, I, I can't take advantage of any little shortcuts with reciprocal functions. I've just got to write this as 1 over the sine of x plus 1 over the cosine of x. Okay, Then I go back and I say, okay, do I see any Pythagorean identities here? The answer is no, I don't. Doing that did not produce any Pythagorean identities. But I do have some obvious algebra now. There's, there's two fractions here. I need to add them together. Uh, the common denominator is simply going to be the product of those two denominators, so sine cos. And my numerator here will be cosine of x plus the sine of x. Okay, good. Now I go back. Did that produce any Pythagorean identities? No, it didn't. Is there any obvious algebra? Well, yeah, now, now there is. See, now I'm taking this expression here and dividing it by this fraction. Well, what do I do... Or how do I go about dividing fractions? Well, what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal. So I reciprocate that fraction. Okay. Now, did that produce any Pythagorean identities? No. Is there any obvious algebra? Yes. Now, you got to be careful with this because this might not be obvious to everybody, but sine plus cosine is identical to cosine plus sine. Order does not matter with addition. And so now this is essentially in the numerator. I'm multiplying it across, which means I can cancel it with that factor in the denominator. And so now with that gone, this is equivalent to sine of x times the cosine of x. Now there are some issues here with non-permissibles that, that we're not mentioning at this point, but that's, that's because we're just not, uh, in this particular question here, we're not going to worry ourselves about that. We'll talk about non-permissibles in a, in a little bit here. So there you go. That's how you go about proving this identity.